DNA has a structure that is ideal for carrying information in the A's, T's, C's, and G's, the bases of the double helix of DNA, is the potential for storing a tremendous amount of information. There is, in fact, no entity in the known universe that stores and processes more information more efficiently than the DNA molecule. A full complement of human DNA has three billion individual characters. Analysis of the DNA molecule's coding regions show that its chemical characters have a specific arrangement that allows them to convey detailed instructions or information, much like letters in a meaningful sentence or binary digits in a computer code. Bill Gates has said that DNA is like a computer program, only much more complex than any we've been able to devise. And if you reflect on that even for a minute, it's a highly suggestive observation because we know that Bill Gates does not employ wind and erosion or random number generators to generate his software. Instead, he employs intelligent engineers, software engineers. And so everything we know in our experience suggests that information-rich systems arise from intelligent design. But what do we make of the fact that there is information in life, in every living cell of every living organism? That's the fundamental mystery. Where does that information come from? For the past 15 years, philosopher and scientist Stephen Meyer has worked to answer this question. Meyer has developed an argument to demonstrate that intelligent design provides the best explanation for the origin of information necessary to build the first living cell that the DNA molecule holds. It's part of our knowledge base that intelligent agents can produce information-rich systems. So the argument is not based on what we don't know, but it's based on what we do know about the cause and effect structure of the world. We know at present there is no naturalistic explanation, no natural cause that produces information. Not natural selection, not self-organizational processes, not pure chance. But we do know of a cause which is capable of producing information, and that is intelligence. So when people infer design from the presence of information in DNA, they're effectively making what's called in the historical sciences an inference to the best explanation. So when we find an information-rich system in the cell, in the DNA molecule specifically, we can infer that an intelligence played a role in the origin of that system, even if we weren't there to observe the system coming into existence. Meyer's work on the origin of genetic information is now part of a comprehensive scientific case for design that grew out of a meeting of scientists and philosophers on the central coast of California in 1993. Their objective was to reassess an idea that had dominated biology for more than a century. In the process, they gave birth to a theory that has become known as intelligent design. To me, the great promise of design is it gives us a new tool and explanation that belongs in the toolkit of science. Intelligent causes are real. They leave evidence of their existence. And a healthy science is a science that seeks the truth and lets the evidence speak for itself. The argument for intelligent design is based on observation of the facts. Now that's my definition of good science. It's observation of the facts. Now when you observe the facts, as Michael Behe has done, what do you observe? You observe this incredible pattern of interrelated complexity. And the way we conclude intelligent design for the bacterial flagellum is the same way we conclude intelligent design for an outboard motor. When we see an outboard motor, we see the way the parts interact and, and so on. We know somebody made that. Uh, the reasoning is the same for biological uh, machines. So the idea of intelligent design is a completely scientific one. Certainly it, it might have religious implications, but it does not depend on religious premises. When I look at the evidence objectively, Without ruling out the possibility of design, design just leaps up as the most likely explanation. And that's why I believe that it's true. I think design is back on the table. You know, we can't explain these systems by natural law. And if we're searching for truth, and they are in fact designed, if we have to be design engineers to understand them, then I say, what's the problem? You know, you go where the data leads you and the implications 
yeah, they have profound metaphysical impl implications, but so be it. So it's a powerful idea that the universe is rational and comprehensible, underwritten by a supreme intelligence that meant for this world to be understood is something that underwrites then the program of science because then you can go out and look at the world and the world will make sense. If it's all just a chaotic assemblage, there's no reason to expect any rationality out there. But if it in fact is the product of a mind, then you can go out and science becomes this enormous, wonderful puzzle solving project in which you can expect to find rationality and beauty and comprehensibility right at the foundation of things. 150 years ago, Charles Darwin transformed science with his theory of natural selection. Today, that theory faces a formidable challenge. Intelligent design has sparked both discovery and intense debate over the origin of life on Earth. And for a growing number of scientists, it represents a paradigm, an idea with the power to once again redefine the foundations of scientific thought. During the 19th century, scientists believed that there were two fundamental entities, matter and energy. But as we enter the 21st century, there's a third fundamental entity that science has had to recognize, and that is information. And so as we encounter the biology of the information age, the suspicion is growing that what we're seeing in the DNA molecule is actually an artifact of mind, an artifact of intelligence, something that can only be explained by intelligent design.